John Ferry was driving his wife to the doctor's. On his way through a roundabout, he had a coughing fit. It seems he may have blacked out. His car crossed to the wrong side of the road where it struck an oncoming van and caused serious injuries to the driver. The key question at trial was whether Mr Ferry was in command of himself at the time of the collision. Was this an intentional action or was this an automatic action that he couldn't be held responsible for? If he blacked out suddenly, then he could hardly be responsible for the consequences. He participated in a police interview and seemed to make a number of inconsistent statements about when he blacked out and what the precise effect was. He also said a number of things that he had been told by his wife, who was sitting next to him in the car and who was also injured. At trial, the prosecutor sought to place into evidence those parts of the interview that tended to suggest guilt, the inconsistent bits. The prosecutor sought to exclude his statements about what his wife said, as those statements were hearsay. And of course, they were hearsay, but there is another principle that says that if a confession is to be used, the whole confession must be used. The prosecutor was unaware of this rule, and so the prosecution's submissions led the court into error. President Sofronov said, It is the duty of both defence and prosecutor to make submissions of law only upon the strength of relevant authority that counsel has actually read and considered, and the significance of which he or she can explain comprehensively and accurately to a judge. It is part of every counsel's duty to assist the court in this way. It is also the duty of a prosecutor appearing in court to be familiar with basic principles of evidence, such as the elementary and long-established proposition that a prosecutor cannot censor a record of interview to exclude the parts that help the accused. The failure to abide by these duties in this case has led to the judge being misled, to a wrongful conviction, to an unnecessary appeal, and to a possible retrial. This case confirms the significance of counsel making every effort to ensure that they do not mislead the court as to the law. (music) 